Eight Alcoholic Beverage Recipes from the White House Cookbook of 1887. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Matt Perard. Eight Alcoholic Beverage Recipes from the White House Cookbook, 1887, by Mrs. F. L. Gillette. For the LibriVox 8th Anniversary Collection. Blackberry Wine, Number 2. Berries should be ripe and plump. Put into a large wood or stone vessel with a tap. Pour on sufficient boiling water to cover them. When cool enough to bear your hand, bruise well until all the berries are broken. Cover up. Let stand until berries begin to rise to top, which will occur in three or four days. Then draw off the clear juice in another vessel and add one pound of sugar to every ten quarts of the liquor, and stir thoroughly. Let stand six to ten days in first vessel with top, then draw off through a jelly bag. Steep four ounces of isinglass in a pint of wine for twelve hours. Boil it over a slow fire till all dissolved. Then place dissolved isinglass in a gallon of blackberry juice, Give them a boil together and pour all into the vessel. Let stand a few days to ferment and settle. Draw off and keep in a cool place. Other berry wines may be made in the same manner. Grape Wine Mash the grapes and strain them through a cloth. Put the skins in a tub, after squeezing them, with barely enough water to cover them. Strain the juice thus obtained into the first portion. Put three pounds of sugar to one gallon of the mixture. Let it stand in an open tub to ferment, covered with a cloth, for a period of from three to seven days. Skim off what rises every morning. Put the juice in a cask and leave it open for twenty-four hours. Then bung it up and put clay over the bung to keep the air out. Let your wine remain in the cask until March, when it should be drawn off and bottled. Florida Orange Wine Wipe the oranges with a wet cloth. Peel off the yellow rind very thin. Squeeze the oranges and strain the juice through a hair sieve. Measure the juice after it is strained and for each gallon allow three pounds of granulated sugar the white and shell of one egg, and one-third of a gallon of cold water. Put the sugar, the white, and shell of the egg, crushed small, and the water over the fire, and stir them every two minutes until the eggs begin to harden. Then boil the syrup until it looks clear under the froth of egg, which will form on the surface. Strain the syrup, Pour it upon the orange rind and let it stand overnight. Then, next, add the orange juice and again let it stand overnight. Strain it the second day and put it into a tight cask with a small cake of compressed yeast to about ten gallons of wine and leave the bung out of the cask until the wine ceases to ferment. The hissing noise continues so long as fermentation is in progress. When fermentation ceases, close the cask by driving in the bung, and let the wine stand about nine months before bottling it. Three months after it is bottled, it can be used. A glass of brandy added to each gallon of wine after fermentation ceases is generally considered an improvement. There are seasons of the year when Florida oranges by the box are very cheap, and this fine wine can be made at a small expense. Methylen, or honey wine. This is a very ancient and popular drink in the north of Europe. To some new honey, strained, add spring water. Put a whole egg into it. Boil this liquor till the egg swims above the liquor. Strain, pour it in a cask. To every fifteen gallons add two ounces of white Jamaica ginger, bruised. 
one ounce of cloves and mace, one and a half ounces of cinnamon, all bruised together and tied up in a muslin bag. Accelerate the fermentation with yeast. When worked sufficiently, bung up. In six weeks, draw off into bottles. Another mead. Boil the combs from which the honey has been drained with sufficient water to make a tolerably sweet liqueur. Ferment this with yeast and proceed as per previous formula. Sack mead is made by adding a handful of hops and sufficient brandy to the comb liquor. Cherry Bounce To one gallon of wild cherries add enough good whiskey to cover the fruit. Let soak two or three weeks, and then drain off the liquor. Mash the cherries without breaking the stones, and strain through a jelly bag. Add this liquor to that already drained off. Make a syrup with a gill of water and a pound of white sugar to every two of liquor thus prepared. Stir in well and bottle, and tightly cork. A common way of making cherry bounce is to put wild cherries and whiskey together in a jug, and use the liquor as wanted. Blackberry Cordial Warm and squeeze the berries. Add to one pint of juice one pound of white sugar, one half ounce of powdered cinnamon, one fourth ounce of mace, two teaspoonfuls of cloves. Boil all together for one fourth of an hour. Strain the syrup, and to each pint add a glass of French brandy. Two or three doses of a tablespoonful or less will check any slight diarrhea. When the attack is violent, give a tablespoonful after each discharge until the complaint is in subjection. It will arrest dysentery if given in season, and is a pleasant and safe remedy. Excellent for children when teething. Ginger Beer Put into a kettle two ounces of powdered ginger root, or more if it is not very strong, half an ounce of cream of tartar, two large lemons cut in slices, two pounds of broken loaf sugar, and two gallons of soft boiling water. Simmer them over a slow fire for half an hour. When the liquor is nearly cold, stir into it a large tablespoonful of the best yeast. After it has fermented, which will be in about twenty-four hours, bottle for use. Roman Punch, number one. Grate the yellow rind of four lemons and two oranges upon two pounds of loaf sugar. Squeeze the juice of the lemons and oranges. Cover it and let it stand until next day. Strain it through a sieve. Mix with the sugar. Add a bottle of champagne and the whites of eight eggs beaten to a stiff froth. It may be frozen or not, as desired. For winter, use snow instead of ice. End of Eight Alcoholic Beverage Recipes from the White House Cookbook, 1887, by Mrs. F. L. Gillette.